So hi, uh, for you don't don't know me, I see a lot of familiar faces. I'm sure I'll chime in through this. Uh, I'm Mike Sorg. I've uh, been doing podcasting for five and a half years now. A uh, little show called The Wrestling Mayhem Show is what we started, uh, just for the fun of it. Um, it's kind of grown. I've uh, kind of turned it into a network at SorgatronMedia.com. And, uh, and, and we're doing a lot of other stuff, a lot of stuff, you know, of, of my interest uh, that I like talking about every week, Awesome Cast, where we talk about tech, uh, freelance for real. Got my best friend to do a video blog uh, every week called Chachi Says. And, uh, and uh, we also do on song for oh, his birthday. Feel like I mean, he feels like it. I mean, he feels like it. It's hard to get him motivated sometimes. Uh, and Unsung on Pittsburgh on video.org, which uh, is also being aired currently on PC TV, Channel 21, or something else if you have Fios. 47. 47. 40. 47. See? See? Oh, maybe. Oh, it's, yeah, a it's a 40. It's a 40 something or other. Yeah. But uh, either way, it's uh, kind of cool that we're on TV. Um, so, yeah, I thought I'd uh, you know kind of share my knowledge that I've learned because I've, I've done this for a while. And. I don't know, too many people have done it for this long and are still doing it and still have their sanity, uh, myself included. Um, so, and I don't know how to run Keynote. There you go. Uh, number one, uh, and this is something I found kind of uh, pretty quick. Opportunities are endless if you're out there doing something like this. Uh, you guys, I don't know how many wrestling fans are in here, uh, but that's Jerry the King Lawler, and that's Sonny, who used to be pretty good, uh, pretty big in the late 90s, and a lot of bikini pics and stuff on WWE, WWF. Uh, and that's me with the camera. Um, since I started a wrestling podcast, we started reaching out to independent wrestling promotions, particularly uh, IWC, the International Wrestling Cartel, who usually has their shows out of Elizabeth. Um, Court Time Sports Center, go check them out. They got a show in a few weeks. Um, <clears throat> so we started talking with people and you know trying to get people on the show to, to kind of get something more you know you know different. Um, and eventually, the, you know, people knew me from the podcast. Some they needed a new webmaster for a while. Somebody called me and said, "Hey, you do websites." Took over for a while, um, which spun into. Helping with Digital Horizons, who now films, and now once, twice a month on Ringside Filming uh, in front of wrestling, best seat in the house that I'd be paying 20 bucks for otherwise. Um, and uh, and that's pretty cool. And, and and that's not the you know, like over the years I've done music podcasts, uh, had a pretty uh, decent sized mu uh, music fan site for a while. And I, we've had the opportunity to talk to uh, some legends that I grew up on, Superfly Jimmy Snuka, um, Jake Sags of the Nasty Boys. Um, you know, we talked to two of the American Gladiators from the NBC revival they had a few years ago. One, the first one happened to be The Rock's, Dwayne Johnson's stunt double in the first few movies he did. And his cousin, I think? So, um, you know, I had a chance to talk to uh, several times members and one time the whole group uh, of Cottonmouth Kings, um, Head P.E., Daddy Longlegs of Wolfpack used to be from Bloodhound Gang, um, and, and it's, it's pretty neat like what we, what we get out of it. And kind of the whole, the whole purpose of you know, there, there's Chachi of course got, got a little something out of this, because he started getting in my projects as well as he does, uh, and he started the video blog, and something like Unsung comes up which was just kind of a discussion about, hey, we need content for this site. You know, it's something that's actually a paying gig, you know, versus what we do with our podcasting. Um, and they saw him on Jachi Says, and I was like, hey, you know, he's been doing this. Would you, he's not like trained or anything, but would you like him as a host? And we love it, we love the show, and that was an opportunity for him, you know. And which, you know, it, Podcasting isn't something you go in for the money. You've heard that probably a few times this weekend. Uh, but these kind of extra quicker opportunities come up. Uh, Walt Riviera was a good one. He started um, his his show, which was uh, uh, music teaching music online. And 
he grew that and it became good and he started making money at it. And now he does orchestral arrangements for stuff like Lady Gaga. Like it's a, was an orchestra, I don't have the site on me, but, um, but he's done like still alive, Jonathan Cole and stuff. And, and he's doing pretty good at it up in New York. The Should I Drink That guys are interesting because they, they do a brewcast, uh, a beer podcast. And, uh, and, you know, to the point they're seen as experts when anybody wants has any questions about, you know, beer. And they've been in publications talking about the, you know, beer, have relationships with local vendors and, and venues. Tuesday nights, they're doing live at Tuesday night mm -hmm. at Baca. Yeah, the new one. Yeah. Excellent, up in Manaka. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's the kind of opportunities that come up because if you do this, especially when, you know, for us, we talk about wrestling, we talk about technology, it's a demonstration, a chance to demonstrate what we're passionate about, what we know about it, prove that we know something about it, um, to the point where I use this as kind of a, my site is a rotating resume. You know, if somebody wants to know what I'm about, they go there, see the shows we produce, see the quality, and if somebody wants to work on a project, and that's, I've had the opportunity to leave my daytime job and do freelance because of this over several years of building up my kind of personal equity. So, um, number two, numbers are important. Why numbers are important, and more talk of this, of course, has been this weekend, and a lot of debate about it. If you want the traditional advertiser, just, you know, they're right, you know, you, you need numbers to back it up, because, you know, you're not going to be able to talk somebody into engagement as easily, you know, especially somebody that wants to sell their brand, you know, it's a little harder. You can make the pitch, but it's hard. Um, our show... And, and you need a track. This, this is one of the big mistakes I made very early. Uh, I went with TalkStreet.com. They're local in Lexford. Uh, they were great. It's free. I don't pay anything for hosting. Great guys. Um, they start to stop, seem to start developing it a couple years ago. And I have numbers for everything. And even before that, I was with, um, what was it? Uh, pod, I don't know, it's pod something. Something got bought by Lipson. And all my stuff disappeared. I can't get back into it. It's gone, you know. Uh, so I don't even have the numbers for that first year. Uh, I, I literally have to, I've started taking everything, putting it in a spreadsheet, and doing an equation to figure out how many people have actually listened to this over the years. Don't do that. Start with Lipson. Start with somebody like Blueberry or uh, or Podtrack. Um, because they'll be able to break it down into better analytics. Since we've started moving to Blip TV for our video, we have a better idea of who and where they're coming from. I wish, it, I wish it was a little bit more robust, uh, but we have an idea at least on that end. We started going through Stitcher. Uh, it's not everybody that we get through there, uh, but it's a nice breakdown for the people that do discover us on something called Stitcher. For those who don't know, Stitcher.com is an app you can get on your uh, Android and iOS device, and it's all audio, and it it's kind of has a discovery kind of uh, system there. It's a nice replacement for iTunes for, for a lot of podcasts. Uh, I think uh, Twit and uh, Smodcast is on there now. They push it. Um, so, I mean, get that, get in that early. I worry about switching over to a different service or switching that URL uh, for the iTunes for people that maybe subscribed to us for years. Um, then I would lose those people. I mean, that's been a fear. Then I might just have to get over and do it, you know, just to get better stats at some point. Um, but that's just a mistake, you know. You do want to know who's watching, who's watching, who's listening, and where they're coming from, and how many, and they're not robots, you know. Um, and beyond that, screw numbers. <laughs> this one guy is more important to me, personally, as far as keep doing this, uh, than you know, thousands of people watching my show, which they don't, you know. Uh, friends like this that will proudly sport that. Some of them have been here this weekend. Um, you know, like, like I said, I, I'd rather have, you know, 10 people engaged in my product in, in what I'm doing and what I'm passionate about, sharing that passion than, you know, thousands of people. I've actually had a conversation, uh, with somebody that's been, you know, uh, you know, what's this podcast for a few years, had a really good show. I know he was on the top of iTunes for a while, um, and just quit. And I'm like, well, you know, why'd you quit? You know, he's like, well, we're getting like 
you know, a couple thousand hits, a couple thousand hits, and, you know, it just wasn't, it wasn't worth it. I'm like, are you kidding me? I kill for those numbers, you know, as far as the numbers are important part. Uh, and he's like, nobody was talking to us. They weren't getting any feedback. You have like a thousand people supposedly listening to your show and nobody's emailing back. There's a big hole there. You know, you're, you, you, are you, am I doing something right? Are they just listening? You know, there's just that, that kind of break in communication. That human element is just, is just missing. Um, like I said, I'm afraid of numbers. Uh, for years, I've tried to kind of gleam from PodCamp. You know, how many, how many shows are, is your show getting? Uh, how, many, how many downloads is your show getting, you know? And I always, like, calculated that into my head versus what I've seen on my own stats. Because I'm like, I'm, you know, I've seen, we've been, we've jumped at 2,000 at a time in a week, you know, which is the way talk shoot breaks it down. So that's how I look at it. Um, and, you know, I hear something like the should I drink that guys and then he hit like a million hits or something like that, like over the last year. And I actually did the math. And I think we've done when I checked it six months ago, like and again, I don't have the early stats, which were which were pretty decent, like 70 to 80,000 over the years. Um, but, you know, you know, just like that one show, we get the emails. We start every week off. We have at least two, three emails. You know, we have people people communicating with us on Twitter. The people on the show, this guy's a co-host now, here and there, thanks to stuff like Skype. You know, we have two guys that have been with us on the show for the last two or three years that started as fans writing to the show and became, when a couple people dropped off because of other commitments, one actually trained to be a pro wrestler, so he felt that he needed to step away from being the fan. Um... These guys, you know, these guys stepped up. The two people that stepped up was a fan in high school. I think he was 15 and he started with us uh, in Corpus Christi, Texas. And the other one uh, up in the Bronx, New York. Um, and so they just wrote letters and we're like, let's get you on Skype. Let's see how this works. And, you know, we had a pretty good rapport with them. And the same is happening. You know, uh, the one has school. So it started at the University of San Antonio. And uh, he might be in and out because of commitments with school. Uh, the other one got a new job up in New York, um, and his his new schedule is Tuesdays are gone. So that's where we record. We can't move it because um, that's when everybody shows up. So we're we're going to guys like this. We're going to guys like you know Riz who was here yesterday, um, and saying you know hey you know Bobby from Johnstown, um, you know you know would you guys like to step up? You guys are great with the conversation. And we're able to pull from that community, you know, and that's how strong it is. We have, you know, okay, it's only 10 to 15 people in the chat room every week, but they are there every week contributing, showing that people, you know, put aside their Tuesdays, you know, for us. And that is very important because those people will be your cheerleaders, your evangelists, you know, to tell everybody else about your show. That will, but then eventually you'll see the numbers big, or at least you'll see more people interacting. And, uh... And I like to think that the trolls are a good sign that you're doing something right, as an aside from that. Um, not typing. Thank you, iPad. Affiliates suck. Uh, that's, that's one of the kind of easy things to get in for if you want to do advertising and trying to make money at a podcast, which, you know, sometimes I struggle with. I don't want to get rich. I, I want to get rich off this. But I want to keep doing it anyways, and, it, and it's always, it would be nice to support the costs uh, with the technology. As you can see, I have some nice CRT monitors back there that I've like long needed to replace and certain people tell me to. Um, but I can't afford to go buy $400 in monitors, you know, just for the show. You know, I just, it's not in my budget. Um, so, you know, I, I've gone to stuff like construction, consumption, Commission Junction, that's the one. Either way, I want to sing the song. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, we did Audible for a while, and we got a few hits off of that. Uh, I never expect to get anything out of that, to be honest. Um, and we started re-pushing it again, because I kind of see it as practice. You know, if you are somebody that wants to do commercial advertising to try to support your show, um, and that's what, that's what I'm kind of, like, kind of, getting my guys to do is, you know, how do we treat these products, you know, and 
can we do this with stuff that we actually use? I'm not going to use, you know, you know, we we we're, we we have like Drobo, you know, we, we're like. I asked uh, uh, Rob for the awesome cast. Is there anything that you use that you would love to talk about on the show that might give us money if somebody buys the DR link? Uh, he's a Drobo. He'll talk about Drobo all day. And it's something that's a message about backup that we really think is important. You know, both of us are content creators, him with more with photography, me, of course, with video, with all this. And, uh, you know, having that and, and all my backups are really important. So it's like, let's put it on there. It's something we can generally talk about and support. And hopefully we'll support us back in, and you know, same like Audible was really weird for the wrestling show. There's no wrestling books on that Audible. I, there's a Stone Cold Steve Austin and a Hulk Hogan one, and they're both really bad because they're read by the author. And I'm sorry, Hulk Hogan talking to you for like three hours about his life, which is interesting enough, uh, isn't isn't the greatest. Uh, so that that was one of those things that kind of you know, let's, let's try something different. So we're trying like video game controls and stuff from, from that. And and like I said, it's a practice and it's a demonstration. So hopefully one day if you go do you do go to somebody and say, you know, we would like, you know, we would like you to sponsor us. We think we're the right audience for you. And you know, hopefully you'll figure out how to present that to them. I'm still, you know, learning that. Um, you can say, hey, look, look at look what we're doing with Audible, you know, and look how many people, hopefully your audience is strong enough and they started reacting. Uh, to that, um, you know, and you say, look, th we did this on this. Obviously, we have people that engage with us. You know, that's where you get better than the numbers. That's where you have something concrete. You know, which is again another number, but it's a more, it's a heavier number. You can say, um, I guess, I guess you can look at this. You can, you can weigh your numbers. You know, you know, you know, uh, that guy wearing the sticker weighs a lot heavier than this hundred people. And I think that's a really good way to look, look at it. Oh. I don't know what I'm doing. Does anybody know Kino? <laughs> there, I'm here, and I want to go here. Keep the faith. Um, over the past year, as I've gone kind of full tilt with a lot of my production, um, and I'm up at three in the morning when I have work the next day at seven when I had a nine to five, and uh, and you're like, you know, am I doing the right thing? Is is this? Am I just kind of working myself in a hole for nothing? Um, you know, I mean, there's been a lot of those late nights. Frankly, and um, and a dedication to a regular schedule. I, I have to say, you know, somebody's like, "Oh, I'll just move the show. You 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 should do that. You you know, go to the concert. Go 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 to this." It's like, no, no. You, you got if you want to build that audience, and you want them to stick around. I, I strongly believe establish that schedule. I'm trying. To, I'm actually with a client right now, trying to establish the schedule for a podcast that they want to do. And they're like, oh, we can do it. And if it doesn't work out, you know, if we can't get everybody in, that's fine. We just won't do it for a couple of weeks. I'm like, no, we're not doing it that way. Your, if you really want an audience around your what you're trying to sell here, or about your ideas here, they need to know that that's going to be in their inbox every Friday, let's see, let's say. They, they need to know to expect that. They're like, oh, look, that was really good. I'm going to, oh, the next one's on Friday. That's great, you know. We start moving. We, we record everything live uh, between the Mayhem Show, Freelance for Real, and AwesomeCast. Uh, we've been very big on the live chat room. Um, ever since the inception of the wrestling show five years ago, we had like AOL going on. Um, they need the, and, that, and that's what we said. Those guys, make sure their Tuesdays are aside. You know, I, I, get, I get messages from people who are like, you know, man, it, it, it really it stinks you're on Tuesday because they have to decide between you and this other podcast. Yeah, but you're winning. <laughs> so, that, that, which is kind of nice. Um, you know, I mean, just, uh, you, you need to know that your, your passion, that that's where the passion comes in. Is, you know, I, I, I like talking, I love talking to these people every week. These are conversations that I'll have anyways about wrestling and technology and, and whatever subject matter we have come up. Um, I know there's a community there. 
I know that somebody expects that show in, you know, on his iTunes the next morning to get him through, you know, his crappy job, just like I did with so many others through my crappy job. You know, I mean, that's very important. And, you know, it just... The best part is watching him get irritated when I don't have my episode in his Dropbox on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we fight that with him a good bit. Um, so, because that usually means a late night, and I'm yeah. staying up Thursday night, because I say, we post this on Thursday. Yeah. And I know we don't have an established time, but I say, we post this on Thursday, and we're not going to shake that. And if he... <laughs> If he, if he goes late, yeah. I have apologies on Twitter. I have like, hey, it's going to be late this week. Sorry. You know, things happen. But I make sure there's some engagement at least to replace that, you know. So, I, and I, I mean, you have to. Because if you just leave it hanging, you're like, does this show just end? Does this show another fly-by-night thing that I'm, you know, on the Internet, just like everything else? And that is so important today. Because your competition, if you're a podcaster, is ESPN, is Leo Laporte, is these other, Adam Carolla, you know, Kevin Smith, you know, and they're going to gravitate toward those brand names that have been all over TV, movies, whatever they've been watching anyways, before they come to you. Why are they coming to you? You're some guy in a basement talking about pro wrestling, when I could be talking to, you know, talking, you know, get TNA's podcast or uh, Ring of Honor or something like that, you know, what makes you important? So, you know, you have that angle. And you have to have that consistency. So do you recommend a live podcast or...? It really depends on what you're doing. Um, if you're... If you're something... If you're more informational, no. Like how stuff works. That uh, They have their podcast. It's, it's an informational discussion podcast. That's fine. That's what it is. You know, um, Something that's more of a discussion that can build a community like wrestling. Wrestling is my... It's easy to do a tech podcast these days. It's always been, because those are the early adopters. They're already on iTunes. They know when our RSS feed is usually. And that's, that's, but you've got to build an audience right there. You go with something like wrestling. Rest, even though there's the internet blogging community and all that stuff in the last 10, 15 years, um, they're not typically as well-versed. For instance, half the people I have on the awesome cast as guests have a MacBook Pro and they can run Skype and I have no problems and, and there you go. Um, half the people I have on the Mayhem Show, no slight to the guys on the Mayhem Show, um, but they have you know, some PC laptop from a few years ago with a Logitech camera sitting on top of it and, and we really have to struggle with the technology side of it. You know, and that's and these guys drawn from the audience are example of what's out there with these guys. You know, what is a podcast? You know, these guys have to learn what is a podcast. You know, these people, you know, when, when we try new initiatives, that's why when Google Plus came out, I tested with the wrestling show first. The tech people, the people that, that roll around here, they know what Google Plus is for the most part, our audience for that. You know, it's, that's the easy thing. That's the easy thing. You'll get the engagement. And really how important is that? You get to the wrestling guys. We did, we started a Google Hangout every Monday night during Raw, which is, you know, the big thing if you're a wrestling fan. Uh, and... And we have a discussion, and we've been testing that. It's been really great. Um, I've been playing with a little bit. I have to, some technology to work out uh, with my setup. But uh, we want to have a, a portion of the show at the end where like, somebody watching can pop into Google to hang out, and they're on the show. Kind of expand out the, the interaction as much as we can. Um, for pay-per-views, I don't want to put a video feed up because if you it's a pay-per-view. You have spent $40, $50 on this thing, or maybe you went to Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, you know, you're not going to be on the video chat. It's less likely. You want to kind of pay more attention. So I start a thread. I say, hey, put your comments here. And I, we have two, three hundred comments throughout the night. It's like they're tweeting, but they're not, you know, polluting all your streams with the wrestling stuff. I'm not talking about wrestling on my stream where, you know, I have to, half my followers don't care, you know, you know, to chase about wrestling. Um... So, so, yeah, so they're, they're my kind of experimental common man test bed as far as new tech like that goes. Review your methods. It is so easy to get complacent uh, when you're doing this. Uh, I've had really bad stints, depending on what's going on, work, you know, other things, you know, you're busy, uh, where I 
neglect to try to get guests for the wrestling show. I've had some really bad, like, oh, we haven't really talked to anybody for a few months, and now I have to get like four weeks lined up or something like that. Or, or I, I don't get anybody different on the awesome cast, so it's just the three of us, or we try to scavenge for somebody that's been on the show a few times before. Um, it, it, this goes back a little bit to the keep the faith part, keep the, keep persistent, keep, keep the energy up, which is really hard, really hard. Um, I think I'm, I, I am, I'm in the, in the process of kind of developing, you know, you know, this, this review, um, like maybe once a month, what's working, what are the stats doing? Um, looking at new things. Like I just, I just started uh, launching the show on. Mixcloud, who actually came to us. Uh, Mevio, there should be starting here soon. Stitcher came up as an option, which has been, like I said, great for the stats to come out of that. Um, and, and, you know, other things, looking at the show format, you know, like our, our keynote talked about yesterday. Um, you know, look at your format. Is there anything you can tighten up? Is there anything that's kind of, I don't like how that pacing goes, you know? Maybe we can be a little quicker about getting into the show, not talking about our weeks and, uh, and, and just get to it, you know, stuff that, you know, that, you know, like, the, like you said, the first couple minutes of your podcast are very important to get people in the door. Um, you know, one of the reasons why we start with fan mail, you know, it's like, Hey, we're an inter interactive show. Please email us. We will talk to you back and, you know, have a conversation over something that you're, you know, that, that you have to say. Um, <coughs> You know, for instance, for uh, a while, we have this horrible debate about total nonstop action wrestling and how bad it is. That comes up, it seems, every week. And for like a month, it felt like we had the same conversation every freaking week. So coming to the guy saying, hey, let's let's scale that down a little bit. You can say something or let's move on, you know. And <clears throat> trying to corral all of your co-hosts is interesting, too, when you have as many as we try to do with me, I'm sure. So... Don't be afraid to talk out of your ass. Uh, it's your show. It's your platform. Uh, a few weeks ago, Ch Chachi was there for this. We were talking about uh, your right to Twitter, or not to Twitter, uh, your right to the internet as a utility, which has been a debate for a while. You know, I mean, you know, Obama wants everybody to have broadband by whenever and, and all that kind of stuff. So we, we just kind of sparked a discussion about it. And it, and it came around, and I was kind of throwing some things out, seeing what was sick, and playing devil's advocate, wherever, and uh, I, what, I attributed the right to have the internet, because we had, you know, these revolutions in Egypt, and what, well, Libya, I think, was, you know, was done on Facebook or whatever. Um, and I, I, I attributed it back to right to bear arms. Why do we have the right to bear arms? So that people can rebel against their government when that time comes that it becomes corrupt because of, you know, a revolution and that whole history. Uh, now we're seeing that Twitter and Facebook are begun. And if you take that away from them, it's going to find other methods. That's a very important method. That's a very important, you know, uh, uh, tool as far as stuff like that. Government's up top because of it. So, uh, what, and, and what was it? You know, I called it the right to bear Twitter. And, you know, everybody kind of just stopped. And, and that was something that, you know, never, if I was afraid, Step on any toes, that would never come out. And it was a, you know, a, a pretty decent idea. The uh, wrestling show, we are big on, you know, maybe this is a little bit from what we learned from the product that we talk about. Uh, we kind of take our opinions and our attitudes about things and turn it up a notch. It's what we really feel, but we turn it up a notch. We kind of become a little bit of a character of ourselves. It makes it way more interesting in the long run. It's sort of uh, people aren't going to listen to you if you're whispering. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you you know, this is my boomstick, yeah. you know, this is my boomstick, this is my pipe bomb, this has been, you know, uh, the uh, recent thing. On this chair and not yell as loud yeah, as I can. this is your soapbox, yell as loud as you can. Um, it's your show, and if, you know, if you're worried about scaring somebody with your show, if you're looking, worried about playing it safe, if you're not pissing anybody off, you're not, my, you know, my philosophy is if I'm not pissing anybody off, I'm not doing it right. You know, if we're not having a conversation, because the best thing is when we disagree on conversations and we have a good conversation out of that on both sides of the point. And then you, whoever you are can pick a side, you know, and that gets you engaged. That gets, gives you a reason to comment. Um, 
and that's it. Fuck up your ass. See what comes out. It might not all be shit. Get out of me, people. Get out of the damn basement. Get out of the damn attic where you're doing the show. Uh, a couple weeks ago, there was a big conference for a client of mine uh, that I've been I've been working social media and uh, video web content for about a year now, almost. Um, and it was one of those if you're sitting kind of the faith thing. If you're sitting there to yourself doing this, and you really don't know if anybody's listening, anybody's doing feedback. You know, this is something on a different level. This is the people that are on Twitter, that are on Facebook as much. Uh, so, you know, as, as you know, as far as the medical community goes, they're still trying to figure it out. Uh, but I had, you know, a couple people come up to say, I like your videos. You know, I, I like I like the quality. I like the, the length of them are perfect because I, I think very much about what length is going to be engaging because the tr trend amongst medical people is to have an hour talk with slides it's about schizophrenia, and somehow I'm supposed to, I, I don't know, maybe I'm a big fan of schizophrenia. Maybe, maybe as a doctor, that's something interesting. But we're also trying to get general knowledge people to talk about, and in our case, mindfulness and, and you know, personal, personal health and mind health. Um, so we, we, you know, think very much about breaking down. And I didn't know if it was working until somebody actually comes up to you. Like, you can get all the comments in the world, but having somebody face-to-face -face saying, I dig your stuff, you know? This guy right here, Fuzzwad, he's gonna be playing the accordion at the Awesome Cast Live in a couple of sessions. That's awesome. That is like the best shit. That's, that's the stuff I'm talking about with the audience, you know, is that have somebody come up to me, you know, here or at a wrestling show and say, I dig your stuff, you know? And that is, that, <laughs> that gives you faith mileage for the next six months. You know, trust me. Um, and you know, you're going. If, I, if somebody came up to me and said that sticker stuff stinks because of this, this, and this, I'll take value with that too. Because not enough people telling me my stuff sucks. I'm, truly. Um, except for Rob, my co host. Rob. He's really good at that lately. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you need that. You need that feedback. You need, you need the positives and negatives. Because uh, if, everybody's, if everybody's holding your hand saying, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good. Um, you're not going to expand much beyond them. You know, you're not going to figure out what is the thing that will get everybody else on board. And you know, we, we want the most people listening to us on our soapbox as we want to. You figure it out, but you still have to figure out tomorrow. We started as an audio cast on a server that's now defunct. Um, with uh, you know a couple of PC mics and all this. Now we're a video cast that's on how many services people watch us on on uh, on the Roku box. You know, there's a lot of stuff there. You guys see my setup. I, I mentioned about uh, the technology. Um, things are going to change if you do the same audio podcast for the next five years. People are going to move on. You know, uh, your format your format needs to evolve. You know, if we're doing the same goofy crap we did uh, in the beginning. You know, people tuned out a long ago, and they did for periods. You know, we've come up. The, 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 the peaks and valleys are amazing with our show, <laughs> but we keep doing it, and that's part of the passion. Um, you know, uh, video is a big thing now, and Blip's been really good for us for that. But you don't know what's going to be the big thing tomorrow. You're going to know. You know, I'm engaging with my 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 fan base on Twitter and Facebook. What's going to be the next Twitter or Facebook? It's going to be Google Plus. Try to figure that out right now. Try and experiment that. Try to stay ahead of the curve. You know, um, I mean, things, and like I said, we are very low. I've had a couple conversations this weekend about being a very no budget podcast. Uh, most of the equipment, and I'll talk about this in the next session in the hub more uh, at length. But most of our equipment is, we can say acquired. I don't mean that as stolen. Um, a lot of our stuff is uh, uh, computers people get rid of because they don't want to replace a hard drive. So I've, you know, having a history of building machines, you know, we've been really good about tinkering, resurrecting them, and uh, and finding a place for them, and, and splitting up, you know, the tasks of recording and skyping, and the audio, and, and and being able to put the show notes on a computer, uh, and that that busts a lot, you know. I gotta test everything before every every show, and it's usually something that's like, oh, why's the audio not working? I really think I need to replace every audio cord in my system right now. 
<laughs> is one of those things. And that's, you know, I, you, know you know this. You should, you, um, and it's, uh, you know, computers are going to go, you know. It's like, you know, I, my, my show was on this hard drive, but it, it, it died. And maybe I should really think about redundancy, you know. Um, and, and, you know, that's why we split off the computers, you know, stuff like that. Um, for instance, like I said, we started on AOL for the chat room. We decided, you know, hey, we're on audio cast, but we'll throw the video stream up. It's too hard to do video. This is four years ago. We started with Blog TV. Blog TV got, started getting really weird, and we didn't like the quality and the commercials. We, you know, I mean, just a pop wrestling show wants to have tampon commercials playing uh, during their show, and it got really annoying. So we moved to Ustream. Ustream is so annoying now that I watch Bird's Eye View, and I get, again, and this is legit, a tampon commercial in the middle of Bird's Eye View. And if you ever watch that show, it's kind of really funny. Um, and now we're on Justin TV, and we'll be looking, is this the, vi the video platform we're going to stay on? We've gotten a little, and we, this is where you listen to your community. You get, hey, I got this commercial. Oh, that's another commercial. I had a refresh. You know, when that, you start getting like that one too many of those kinds of complaints, you know, which is something that will keep people from coming to your show, you need to move on. You got to see what else is on there. Maybe at some point we start paying and go to Viva Live. We talked with them a couple years ago. I didn't think we were ready for them. Uh, but, you know, they're worth another look. Every year we do this, I'm really impressed with how far they've come with that. It's gotten smoother and smoother, and maybe it is something where we need to go to a service that we paid for like that. You know, maybe we've gotten big enough that we need to do that. Maybe uh, Skype. Skype is being a pain in the ass when you're, who isn't worried what Microsoft's going to do with it? But that's what a lot of podcasts are built on. Uh, this Week in Tech recently, they... They went to something. It's kind of it's kind of like Vivo, uh, as in it's it's a company that does video conferencing. It's called Video, and I don't know that they're still using it because they got to their new studio. They started using it. I, I sat there and watched the live stream uh, for an hour on a show that was supposed to start, uh, and they couldn't get it figured out. I think they're back to Skype, um, and but they've wanted to be off there for a while because there's definitely technical problems with Skype if you've used it. Um, and you want that consistency. We had a guy, we were, we were bridging a phone call to a guy in Johnstown and it couldn't even carry it. Um, but, the, but the video Skype call to the guy in San Antonio is fine. The video Skype call to the guy in Russia we called one time was perfect and better than these guys mostly. Uh, so there's something different. We're looking at Google Video, you know, uh, to see if that might be a little smoother and nice alternative and see what else is out there. You know, it's going to change. Technology changes. This is a big technology thing. Little is unreachable. It's my final point. Um, if you're doing a show that you know you want to talk to your heroes, you know, again, like we mentioned the other day. Um, so you do a wrestling show. You want to talk to what? You know, Hulk Hogan, Ric Flair, something like that, right? You know, guys you grew up on. Uh, you do a tech show. You know, I'd love to talk to Steve Wozniak someday. You know. Um, I think we need. I think I want the show to be good enough to, for to have a Steve Wozniak on, but um, and the music show. I had nothing to show for the music show. I was a. I did a, a fan site for the Insane Clown Posse called Western PA Juggalos for several for about nine years, uh, and just decided you know hit them up and said you know actually they they actually reached out to me a PR guy for Suburban Noise Records, um, and if we on the I was like oh man it's something for the music stuff. It's an email. Just throw an email out. Find a contact. Find a booking agent. Find something. If the, the Gladiator guy. I don't even know how we found the Gladiators. I think we started hitting up on Facebook or something. You know, everybody's on Facebook. My God. Send a, send a direct message. Send, send an ad. Like, hey, we'd like to talk to you about this and that and the other thing. You know. The worst thing you can do is not ask. Yeah. Because the worst thing that happens is you say no. Yeah. It's like, I've been turned down. I've been turned down face to face. I've been turned down face to face by people that really weren't worth as much as the people I've talked to. That, yeah, you're a little pissed at first. Uh, but then you start thinking, I was like, I've talked to Superfly Jimmy Snuka. And you, an indie wrestler, are going to tell me no. Yeah, you, an indie wrestler that maybe had five minutes in the WWE, is going to tell me that you don't do podcasts like mine. You don't want, and especially when you're trying to plug your own podcast and you're trying to plug your own merchandise and get your face out there, uh... You know, it's one of those things. Maybe they, you know, they don't they don't take time to listen to the show to see, you know, our attitude towards things, um, and maybe they've had some bad experiences. But uh, 
you know, it's no big thing. You get no. If you're not afraid of rejection, which I know, that's a big thing, you know. I, I had I battled it a lot. There's a lot of people I didn't email, and I kind of wish I did considering the people that did come through for me. Um, and don't be afraid to try things, you know. I mean, you know, the, like the stuff we're doing with Unsung is, is completely outside the box of anything we've, we've done as a network, really. I mean, we that is going from we're a very conversational, open discussion, little editing kind of stuff to hey, let's do a news magazine. Let's try to make this interesting. Let's make let's make nonprofit news interesting to the masses. Is the goal? Let's give the guy who drops a swear word every two sentences a microphone <laughs> and make him tell you about serious. Let's things. let's make Shachi TV friendly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's make them dress. dress up nice and uh, and and put them out in the town and hang out by the river and and tell us why we need to to, to give to charities and check out right up thread up and uh, and all that good stuff. So um, and that and that too has been right a very good opportunity. I mean, I don't know how I've been here ten years with school and I've seen parts of the city and angles of the city I haven't seen and never thought I would. You know. And that's that's because of the work I do with this guy, and I get to work with my best friend since high school. It is really fucking cool. I mean, it's just the, the no no way around it. That is the that is the coolest part of what I do. It is is projects like that that I can pay the bills with and enjoy. And and yet, you know, a podcast may not be. I'm going to do the Wrestling Mayhem show. I want to become rich and famous off of that. That's not the idea. You do that because you love it. You do that to demonstrate what you can do, and then these other opportunities will find you if you work hard enough. And I guess good go home. This is where I'm at. I think that's real funny. But, uh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Any okay. questions? Yes. Yeah, the yes. one thing I learned years ago when I became an entertainer and had to book myself, uh, Another entertainer showed me a sign he has in his office. He says, most sales happen after the 15th contact. Most people stop trying after the third. Mm -hmm. So you've got to, got to touch these people 15 times. Exactly. I am a horrible salesman. I did magazine sub subscription renewals for a month and got booted down and luckily had an opportunity in the... Uh, in uh, retention. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm really bad at selling myself. I'm trying to get past that, especially as a freelancer. My God, I need to sell myself. Um, and, uh, and this has been good practice with that. Say, hey, this is our show. This is why it's important. This is how we do it. This is what we would like to do for you. This is why we think you would find this important because we have this audience. That is, there's where the numbers don't matter. You say, hey, we have this audience and they're really engaged and they're really into what we're doing then would you like to come for the ride and talk about what you want to do? And a lot of people have been really engaging with us on that. Uh, the guys with the Memphis Heat, uh, a documentary about Nashville wrestling, have been really good on this. AON Wrestling out in Johnstown. We might have a TV spot on our show. It, 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 we're in talks right now. Um, I mean, those, you know, that's, that's the kind of really cool opportunities when you, you're able to sell the, your value, which we built over all these years. And by saying, we're, hey, we're a podcast that's been around five years, we're definitely not a fly-by-night podcast at this point. We're not going anywhere. And I, I'll do this for 10 years. If, if it's still fun and, you know, I don't care if we run out of people that we can talk to, you know, as long as I still got these guys to talk to, it's like, let's turn on the microphone and let's do it every Tuesday. There's one in the back. Oh uh, yes, um, one of person online saying uh, iTunes channels are kind of confusing. Any insight on setting them up and maintaining them, such as branding or adding WD podcasts? The, uh, iTunes doesn't help you. I got stuff kind of mislabeled in there. I don't know. I have my video feed for the Awesome Cast. I have no idea how to put it in there. It, it rejects me every time. iTunes is a damn mystery to me. If somebody can tell me how it works, please. Um, <laughs> But uh, it's just important to be there. What do they say? 80% is showing up. Should be on iTunes. Be searchable. You know, if uh, you know my video feed isn't there for Awesome Cast, but I have the kind of everything catch-all feed for Sorgatron Media, so at least it's on in that. Um, and I do have a link on on the site that if you click it, it will subscribe to the feed. It just I can't get it into iTunes. I don't know how to fix it. Part of that fear of uh, 
I don't want to change my link to something like Pod Tracker or uh, Wizard Media, I think. <laughs> they will give you uh, kind of a feed, a feed link that gets to your podcast wherever you post it. But you know, every time they hit that link, it's it pings on them, and they get to do their stats on their server. So it's, it's by way of that. I don't want to change that feed. I'm afraid all those people there are like, oh, this didn't show up for you this week. I'm gone. You know, again, kind of that consistency. Um, so yeah, and, and and there's been complaints. I know iTunes has been. Uh, they've lowered their what do you call it? Their refresh rate. Um, I've noticed this, this week, I post a show at about 2, 3 in the morning, the audio show at least. I'm still running the video to full up well to the next day. Um, and I was like, oh, I need to grab that because I was uh, working down at the cafe. I was like, oh, I need to download this and put it up, up on, uh, uh, what was it, Cloud Mixer or whatever I mentioned before. Um, and it wasn't there. Like, I, you know, it would be there by the morning. It would be there within an hour. And uh, it, it, iTunes is really kind of not giving a crap about podcasts and they really have it for a while. They don't make money off of it. Uh, I think I said last year, Steve Jobs doesn't care about your podcast. Uh, I think he called it amateur hour, like last year, uh, which is, you know, makes us feel real good, you know? Um, <clears throat> so I don't mean, you deal with iTunes. It, there's, there's, there's so many other outlets out there. Stitcher, media fly, uh, media, you know, something like that. Uh, what's it called? Um, but yeah, anything else? I kind of ranted about Apple again. <laughs> <laughs> iPhones are cool. Stitcher's awesome, though. It's just something instant about it, I guess, right? You don't have to wait for download times. You, you know, it's, start you, playing. There, I, I give Stitcher a lot of credit. They kind of simplified certain things. Because uh, I, I thought Mediafly was the greatest thing. It was like, I don't have to deal with downloading this. I, You know, how many times I sit there, you know, I have that uh, commutes for shoots and, and, and the client out and export, and that's, you know, was my thing. I'll... Queue up media flight. But thing is, and I've done this, that oh, the show's not on there. I'll just add the RSS feed. And if it's compatible, it's in there. That's cool. I can put all the shows I listen to in there, regardless if they're, they decide to be on the service. Um, but then you click one, and it's like, oh, that's a video feed, and I'm driving, and which one's a video feed? Which one's the MP3 feed? Really, this shouldn't be streaming over a cell network. Stitcher breaks it down uh, really nice that it is like, hey, this is all audio. Uh, you're not going to get screwed with like, whoops, I, I clicked the video link because the show is this. Or they really uh, embedded this, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, converted this really weird at a high bit rate, and I'm not going to be able to get this on a cell, you know, on a cell signal. Because I mean, you can watch video definitely on a cell signal if they do it right. Um, it's nice for me because I'm not that much into podcasts that, that I know what I want to listen to. Yeah. So I can literally just tap one and say, okay, three seconds later. I don't. I, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. I mean, I try to listen harder than that. But you can literally just just change a channel like good. Anyway. Yeah, and there's a big push on that. There's a lot of content like CNN's there. All the big ones are there. Yeah. Again, you're competing with them. Great, um, but you know, deliver something else, something they don't have, which is yeah. what I think we did. Um, and uh, it, but but they're they're nice. And it's really interesting on something like Stitcher, on something like iTunes, uh, going to the podcast and seeing. Um, of people that download you download the D's. You know, that's that, that, that's a little bit of insight into your audience. I mean, it's really, really broad, because I, I wonder sometimes if it's like, somebody downloaded my show and they downloaded I Want Wrestling once, is that automatically at the bottom of that feed? But then I have shows where I know people watch it, meet people download it, but I don't see that feed. I don't know if there's a threshold. Uh, Stitch is another angle on that. It's like, you know, what, what, are, what is it recommending along these lines? You know, or is it just a general, hey, here's more tech shows. Hey, here's some more support shows. I'm sure there's some sort of a stats feeding it up there. I know. It's, those you... viewed, it's sort of set up like iTunes, where mm -hmm. most popular stat picks, things like that at the top. Of yeah, the uh, they're, they're real big on kind of podcast discovery. Yeah. A lot better than iTunes, I think. Uh, and that's like kind of their bread and butter right now. Is like you, hey, I go in because I like this week in tech. And, you know, hopefully it comes around and say, hey, you got to listen to this awesome cast thing. Uh, that would be really nice for me. Uh, the stats have been interesting, you know. I mean, I, we didn't advertise Stitcher, what we talked about. We, well, I just like, oh, let's see what happens. Let's see if people come up. And I had, like, you know, 20, 30 views, you know, of, of, of the wrestling show. And and that was the one I tested it with. And I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, and I, I hit him up. I was like, let's, hey, let's throw these other feeds in here. You know, let's see what happens. So I'm waiting. I haven't checked out the stats on them yet, but there's definitely some discovery happening. And if they've thought that much about the stats there, there's got to be something happening on that end about discovery, about about stuff you like. So 
Yeah. Maybe that's that's based on people starring it or something too. Yeah, yeah, you do. You can't favorite it all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little wonky because I play everything on the favorites channel. And it's hard to go in and delete stuff. That's my only complaint with that app. Uh, but once you, I mean, if you know, it's like the Facebook thing. If you didn't scroll from the beginning, it's pretty good. Um, <laughs> anything else? Right. Let's go eat. Screw this. <laughs> Screw social media. <laughs> it's more important. If you have any questions or anything, I said I have a few more sessions and uh, email me, whatever. <laughs>